it is best to arrive at least an hour before the gates open at Tokyo Disneyland. Once the gate opens, make a dash towards the Monsters Inc. Hide and Go Seek ride in Tomorrowland to get fast passes. Make sure you're quick as there'll still be a ton of people behind you. And are ready, you can see the times changing. Gotten seconds apart. Then make the mad dash over to Pooh's Honey Hunt in Fantasyland. This is an incredibly popular, charming, trackless ride that is unique to Tokyo Disneyland. It is notorious for having some of the longest wait times, which is why we go on it first. There's no track on the ground. <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed it. From there it's a quick hop around the corner to the Haunted Mansion. And with it being Halloween, it has the Nightmare Before Christmas theming. From there head to Critter Country to go onto Splash Mountain. This can be ridden by using the single rider line. If you go in the fast pass lane and just say I want to ride a single rider, you will get on with almost no wait times. Everybody. We were gonna do this um, single rider, so then that means we actually get on closer and faster than the fast pass. And then the person that was going with Justin was actually going on as an individual, but had waited in line. Yeah. So when she realized we were together, she's like, "Oh, let's switch." So we switched and went on together, like literally walked on. Yeah, amazing. And don't forget to get the photo to commemorate the experience. So we headed to the Monsters Inc. ride as our fast pass time was quickly approaching. This is an interactive dark ride that was opened in 2009, where you use a flashlight to activate things in the ride. It is a sequel to the Monsters Inc. movie, where Boo returns to the Monster World to join in on the Flashlight Festival. I did find the story a little hard to follow, as we were too focused on hitting things with a flashlight. We then quickly picked up some fast passes to Space Mountain. One of the big differences in Tokyo Disneyland from all the others is the World Bazaar, which replaces Main Street USA. It is a huge covered structure that is great for hiding from the blistering sun or the pouring rain. It's a great place for shopping for all that Disney merch, and every so often they'll have a random celebration. We then rode Pirates of the Caribbean, which had no wait times. This one still has the scenes that are more faithful to the original ride, before Disney changed it to be more politically correct. On to another Disney classic, The Jungle Cruise. It's a little harder to understand in Japanese, but it's still fun to sail through the jungle, discovering all the creatures. Also, I believe the wall projections in the caves are unique to Tokyo Disney and make it come alive. We next made a quick stop at the Enchanted Tea Room Stitch Presents, which opened in 2008 when Stitch Madness was sweeping Japan. This features a giant animatronic Stitch that sings and spits water at the audience. The fast passes were ready for Space Mountain, so we ended up heading there. <laughs> Typical of Space Mountain, it's hard to film, but so much fun to go on. 
It was not even lunchtime and we had already ridden most of the major rides, not including Big Thunder Mountain, which was under refurbishment at the time. We then checked out Toontown, which has a much more realized backdrop than the Anaheim version. We were gonna get some snacks, but the lineup was even longer than some of the rides. We then had time to relax and take in Frontierland. Before we went to the castle to take a few photos. Like Disney Sea, cosplaying is a huge part of the experience here, and many park guests will come dressed up as their favorite character. The quality on some of the costumes is so good they could easily be mistaken as some of the park's official characters. There was a character meet and greet at the front of the park near the entrance where many excited fans huddled around the park characters, waiting to talk to them. A tip to see them up close is to hang by the washrooms on the right hand side near the stroller rentals, as they will have to exit here when the meet and greet is done. Next to see is the Dreaming Up Parade, which is supposed to be very good, as well as lotteries to enter for entertainment shows as well as a lot of exclusive food to snack on, such as Toy Story Alien Mochis, the watch out for the long lines. If you stay till the evening, then the nighttime spectacular is worth seeing. One last tip is to try and avoid going on the weekends. Use the crowd calendar to plan your visit, as wait times can exceed up to three hours on popular rides. But waking up at 5 a.m. both days had left us exhausted, so we decided to call it a day and head back to Tokyo. We had some ramen on the way home, then capped off the day with some bubble tea. A side note, I love how they unwrap the straws in a way that you never come in contact with them. And it also saves the customer from trying to find a non-existent garbage can in Tokyo. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below on what your favorite Disney park is. See you in the next one.